With that, I will proceed with my remarks. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation Subcommittee hearing on impacts of shipping container shortages, delays, and increased demand on the North American supply chain. Today we will hear from witnesses who can speak to the unprecedented conditions in the container shipping market. That is an important issue and requires our attention not only to determine the root causes of the problem, but also to hear potential solutions to alleviate the strain on our supply chain and prevent future disruptions in the future. In every sector of international commerce, the COVID-19 pandemic is having long-lasting consequences and is drastically disrupting global and domestic supply chains. The shift to work from home for many Americans resulted in a significant increase in online shopping. A heightened demand for imported consumer goods, manufacturing parts, and commodities produced in Asia, coupled with periodic labor shortages due to COVID outbreaks, has fueled massive backlogs and price increases in the shipping container market. The increased flow of goods has primarily been from China to the United States and has resulted in significant port congestion, especially on the U.S. West Coast. South of my district at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, there are many as 60 ships anchored off the coast, which doesn't include even more ships that were unable to anchor offshore due to a lack of overflow space. This is a major problem. In addition, carriers have often chosen to ship empty containers back to Asia rather than carry U.S. exports since it is more profitable to do so. As of June 3rd, container rates from Los Angeles to Shanghai were only $779 compared to $5,952 from Shanghai to Los Angeles, highlighting just how massively imbalanced the market is. Container shortages have placed a heavy strain on our agriculture exports, leaving them without access to international markets and no guarantee that their product will be delivered on time. These shortages also cause backups in port terminals where containers are stacking higher than ever, making it more difficult for truckers to move containers across the country. Longshore workers are burning both ends of the candle, trying to keep pace with the del deluge of imports. And all while American workers have been exposed to numerous COVID-19 outbreaks in ports, making their health and welfare all the more uncertain. Delays are also costly, not only in time lost, but also in the application of detention and dem demurrage fees for lengthy, lengthy container storage times both on ships and on docks. For example, container turnaround times have nearly doubled from 60 to 100 days. Add to that peak season surcharges and it becomes very difficult for our exporters to compete in the global marketplace. On March 10th, I sent a bipartisan letter to the Federal Maritime Commission, along with Chairman DeFazio, Ranking Member Graves, and Ranking Member Gibbs, to ensure that ocean carriers are abiding by the Shipping Act of 1984 and not engaging in unjust and unreasonable shipping practices. I look forward to hearing from the FMC, who is currently conducting Fact Finding 29, an investigation to identify operational solutions to cargo delivery system challenges related to COVID-19. Today, I look forward to hearing from the diverse interests, including international carriers, domestic exporters, labor, and ports, as well as from the FMC on how they are addressing this issue. I now call on Ranking Member Graves 